Okay. So it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm guessing. Guessing this is it for the day, maybe. Here we go. Everyone's back. Good work. You know what? They did all right. We're going to get it in the neck for not solving the problem of the red masks. Small drug dealers invade Freeburg. Rogers is responsible for Freeburg PD. Break down. Mayor Rogers, I will bring order to this police station. I think I'm about to get it in the neck. My son was in a car accident. The doctors say he's fighting for his life. Can I manage to work? I can't manage, just can't manage to work today. Can I have the day off? Oh, man. Yeah, you can. I've got to look after Purdy. Tree boar's getting some stripes, though. That's for sure. Well done, buddy. And there's old Frank Drebin. Police squad, he's in. Get the feeling there's one here we haven't listened to. Is it this one? No, we've definitely listened to that one. We've listened to that one. We've listened to that one. I think we've listened to that one. Bud meets Bob. We'll go with that one. I'm not sure. We may have listened to that. Please be advised that we're unhappy with the efficiency of the police department. We're cutting the department's budgets. Use one job slot. Removing an occupied slot will automatically fire employees. Sogo's gone. I'm going to ring up every day pretending you're real. Check you saw an oath to serve a city. You can't keep your... Oh, God. We are struggling with some resources, I think. Bill Butler reports that two unidentified men snuck onto his farm and set fire to the barn. As the call came in, the two criminals were attempted to gain entry to the house. Trebor, Vandal, Ron, you three are on this one. Okay. 10 o'clock. There are no signs of the criminals near the house. The front door has been broken down and shadows lurk inside. Going in through the front. Good work, everybody. Every day more. Drug addicts attempt to hide an expensive blocker, blocker bottle of liquor under his jacket. When he's caught, he began to throw a fit. Sogo, Birch, you two are on this one. Okay. Trebor and his his crew are back. Good work, you lot. One of our new guys tried to rape our accountant. We locked him up in a hotel room, but he's threatening to hand the whole organization to the police. I think it's time. Okay. You're in, you're on this one. Good work, Sogo, even though you're gone tomorrow. Okay. Chat, with something going down at the city centre today at 1839. We wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think 1,000 should cover it. 1,000 seems... Seems like a measly amount. So go, you're going to that one. A woman reports that a skinhead attacking a dark-skinned valet, striking him around the legs, yelling... I'll beat you till you're dead, freak. No shit, I'm gonna do it. Trebor, Vandal, Birch, Grant, you three are on this one. Gurin's back. I dare and ask what he did when he was there.
Okay. Situation's more serious than we thought. I'm going to send Gur into that one. And you know what? I'm sending Soko to this one. This is the one we shouldn't be doing it, I think. Attempt to murder city centre. I'm sending him. I'm sending him. This is the, the Christopher Sand one. But you know what? I want him to know that a thousand isn't enough. I'm only sending one person, though, so he might not get that message. When it's just being placed on stretcher, when another shot rings out at the time the shooter finished the job, his firing position could not be determined, but the shots are clearly coming from one of the skyscrapers. Going to the one on the right. Fender court, officer unharmed, civilians unharmed. Well done, Sogo. I wish I wasn't firing you. Jack, we don't know why you did it, but we hope you had good reason. Don't forget who your friends are. We don't want any more trouble. Well, I would suggest that you pay me more money. Defender court, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good work, everybody. Now, this looks interesting. Eight-year-old Kevin is home alone, hiding under the bed. Unknown persons gathered outside his apartment door. Can we get these people back quickly? Come on, come on. Come on, get back. Get back, hurry up. I can't leave poor old Kevin alone. I'm sending Sogo on that one as well. Since he's not going to be here tomorrow. Okay. You've got three new frames. Okay, open the investigation. Ning He is the faithful assistant to Ying Yang. Jin Yang. <laughs> A founding member of the gang, he's entrusted with the most serious jobs. He keeps his more valuable prizes at home while he arranges for their sale. He then brings them to the Wise Dragon restaurant on the day he's planning to make the deal. Gang must have an immediate buyer for the necklace. So Ning, he brought it to the restaurant on the same night. Usually the restaurant is open around the clock, but it was closed that night because an important deal was going down. He has a key to the restaurant. Valuables are kept in the safe under the bar, so... He unlocked the door. He went in. He did the thing, thingy what? I think he's a Chinese immigrant. Hasn't officially worked anywhere in the last... Okay. Van Harlem Birch. Van Darlem Birch, you're on the case. Off you go. Is that even a road we're driving down? Ron and Garen, you're, you're off to that one. Poor old Purdy, he's, she's not doing anything. Okay. Okay, good work, everybody. We're able to arrest all suspects. Okay. Yes, and I can't investigate here just yet. Okay. Let's wait and see what happens over there. That's good news. Poor old Kevin was all right. Let's end the day. Good work, everybody. Sorry, Sergo. Now what? In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Nice. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, 
you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time, I only got up to sixty. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vickis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. Mm, Vickis Varga. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, He'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Hmm, Not the best this is time going. to talk, Mr. Varga. No, oh, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around. But I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. What the... This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. Hmm. Old Varga. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. Day 12. Greek priest to be appointed head of Orthodox Church. Orthodox priest, bribe mayor. Students volunteer to help farmers. Well, we're going to work again. My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vickers was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. Never. 
You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. Good conversation. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. Into the, the ranch. seems surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real. The sound of the engine was real. The dust was real enough, too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The Sand family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. Very lucky. Mm -hmm.